Welcome to School City Boot Camp. This is Roger Bright. This video will talk about creating an answer key only assessment in School City. This tutorial will teach you how to set up a test for your students to take online in School City using the answer key only feature. This is the easiest way to set up an assessment. You will need to have already created your assessment and have saved it as a PDF to be able to set it up in School City. Log into School City Suite using your Lawson number and district password. If you don't know how to find the address, you can type it from this screen or you can simply Google School City Hillsborough County and it will bring up a link to get you to this page. From the launch pad, left click the assessments icon. Then left click create assessments. This video will only go into creating a simple answer key, so left click answer key only. Begin by naming your assessment. To do this, simply type the name you want in the field labeled assessment name. You can also select the courses for whom you want to make this assessment. Since I teach two subjects, I will select that feature. This opens a drop down menu. I will left click only on my civics classes. I will then click next in the lower right corner. The next page will ask you for the standards you're testing. If you don't want to mess around with this at all, you can select not aligned and move on. If you want to attach standards, there are several ways to do it. One is to left click on your grade level, then topic, and click the standards you want to apply by clicking the boxes next to them. Another way is to type part of the standard in the search standard field and press the search button. Then click the box next to the standards you want. You can click more than one. The standards you select will appear in the standards box. When finished, left click next. Now you'll enter the number of questions that appear on your assessment in the number of items field. Type in the number and then left click update. Now you need to set up each question. This video is only going to show how to create a multiple choice answer sheet, but there are many more options in School City. To investigate the options about changing the question type, left click the down arrow in the question column. Next, select how many options you want the question to have. It defaults to a standard A, B, C, D multiple choice format, but you can select as few as two for a true false or as many as nine for a matching question. Now select the correct answer for each question by clicking the appropriate letter in the answer column for each question. If you want to make one question worth more points than another, you can do so by changing the number in the points column for that question. Now you need to select what standard the question is covering. Do this by left clicking the down arrow next to the word select in the standards column. Then left click on the standard you want to select. You can select more than one standard if you have multiple standards and more than one apply. Finally, instead of doing this for every question, you can copy standards for other questions. Left click the down arrow under the functions column and left click copy standards. If you want to apply the same standard to all the questions, the program defaults to all as the copy choice. Left click apply to apply the same standards to all the questions. If you only want to apply the standard to some questions, left click the down arrow, then left click the check mark next to all to clear the field. Then select the questions you want to apply the standards to by left-clicking on them. 
You will then left click apply to apply that standard to the questions you selected. You'll now have to go to the questions you didn't select and apply different standards to them. At this point, it would be a good idea to save your work by left clicking on save in the lower left corner. Then left click next. You will now set up a grading template for your assessment. While there are many options available, here we are just going to set up a simple 10 point scale. Start by left clicking on the blue load from available templates button you see at the top of the screen. The pop-up you see will then appear. Scroll down until you see the MSCTE generic template and left click apply this template. School City will default to percentage with the numbers you see here. If you want a simple 10 point scale, you can change the numbers by putting 60 in the percentage from column for the D line, 70 in the C line, and so on. I frequently include bonus points on my assessments, so I prefer to use cut points so the grade letters accurately reflect the correct grade. To switch, left click the circle next to cut points. Now I change the numbers so that an F is any score up to 5.99 points on a 10 point quiz or an 11 point quiz where there's a bonus question. A D is any score between 6 and 6.99 points and so on. Obviously your cut points will vary depending on the number of your questions. Be sure to enter values up to the hundredth place. When finished, left click save, then left click next. You're almost finished. Check the dates in the administration window to make sure they give you enough time to give the assessment, for kids who are absent to be able to take it, and for you to be able to grade it. You can change the dates to whatever you'd like. If you want your students to take the assessment online using the School City Student Portal, then you need to select Online Answer Sheet by left clicking the box next to it. At this point, all your students will see in the portal will be a 10 question answer sheet. You can see what your students will see by left clicking Online Preview. As I said, all your students would be able to see would be a simple 10 question answer sheet with no context to make any sense of. Your students would need to access the actual test from some other source, like Edsby or a pre-printed test. If you want your test included in the student portal as well, then left click on the black folder icon below online preview. The pop-up you see here will appear. Left click anywhere on the screen. A file explorer window will appear. Navigate through your folders until you find the PDF for the assessment you want to give the students and double left click on that file. Your document must be in a PDF format. School City doesn't recognize Word or Apple's pages. If your quiz is saved in Word and you don't know how to save it to a PDF, it's really quite simple. First, open the document in Word. Then in the upper left corner, left click on file, then left click save as, and select PDF from file type. Now, file type, those actual words might not appear. It would be the line immediately under the name of the document, and it would probably say something like Word document with an arrow next to it. Left click the down arrow, scroll through until you find PDF, Highlight that, click it, and then left click save. Your document will now appear in the pop-up window. Close the window by left clicking the X in the upper left corner of the pop-up. Left click online preview again to see what your students will now see with the uploaded quiz. 
So here you can see that the quiz appears right next to the possible answers. The students can scroll down through the PDF to view all of the questions. You will also have the opportunity to provide your students with testing tools like the line reader you see here. To go back to setting up your test, left click, exit full screen. Finally, left click save, then left click publish. If this is the first test you are creating for students to take online, you'll want to go to the advanced settings. If you've created tests for students to take online before, you can click no thank you, I'm done. This is an advanced settings. I want you to see how to access advanced settings from the manage assessment screen if you decide you want to make changes to them later. First, scroll down until you find your assessment. Next to your assessment, on the right side of the screen, you will see a drop down arrow. Left click that arrow to access a functions drop down menu. Then left click advanced settings. Here we see a menu giving us the ability to schedule, change online settings, view flags, and finally activate the test. Currently, we are on the scheduling tab, and you can see that the civics students are marked. If you scroll down, you'll see that the emerging leaders class is not scheduled, which is how I set it up at the very beginning. The next place we want to go is online settings. So left click that tab. This warning pop up will appear. Don't worry about it. Since I didn't make any changes, I can left click OK. If you think you did make changes but didn't save them, click cancel, go back, save them, then click online settings again and click OK. Now you'll be given a lot of choices as it relates to how you want your students to take the assessment. Many are straightforward, such as duration, time window, days window. Some are not, such as default time increment. The default time increment, as I understand it, is the amount of extra time you can build into the assessment for a proctor to use to read instructions or make other announcements to the students. This video will not go into all of the possible choices, but we will touch upon an important few. Each one has a description that can be accessed by hovering your cursor over the blue information symbol next to each title. Before a student can take the test online, the teacher must first activate it. To make this easier, left click auto activation and auto reactivation. Auto activation activates the assessment as soon as you publish it. Auto reactivation lets a student go back into a saved test without you having to OK it. As you'll see in the video about the student portal, this does not allow a student to go back into a test once it has been submitted. But if a student stops taking the test partway through and has to go back in, this auto reactivation allows them to do it without you having to make some changes to the test. One online setting item we will come back to in a later video is display item detail in student portal. My next video will be covering students taking the assessment in the online portal and what that's going to look like and what they have access to. You'll want to see that video to see what the students see. But for now, we'll click display item detail in student portal and all the boxes that go with it. There are a lot of online tools you can make available for your students by left clicking the boxes next to them. As you can see, a lot of them are tools you can give such as calculators, algebra editors. Some of them are to import different media like audio, images, and video. Many are useful for the students with special accommodations, things like Answer Eliminator or Color Contrast for students with dyslexia. 
line readers and text to speech is in there somewhere as well after you've selected all the tools you want left click save in the lower left corner because we selected auto activate this pop-up will appear informing us that our assessment is now activated in the student portal click ok a second pop-up will appear informing you that your settings have been saved to leave advanced settings left click the grid at the top of the screen this menu will allow you to go anywhere for now left click assessments this takes us back to assessment management if you check the assessment you created you will see that it has been activated that's it for this video i apologize for its length and its tedium but it's necessary to go through all of these steps to create your assessments in school city once you get used to it it's not that bad and it is worth using the program this is a program that definitely helps one follow the mantra of working smarter not harder look for future videos where i'll talk about the student portal i'll show you what they see and how to change settings so they might not see as much as you want them to i'll also be putting videos on how to share assessments with other teachers how to delete assessments from your personal school city portal and how to create assessments using something called an item bank which if there's item banks already built in for your subject will make creating assessments as easy as you can possibly imagine in the meantime stay safe stay sane and remember that we are all in this together